the, the, the Christian church is present in nations all and with every continent of the planet, churches in countries in three Americas, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania, connected by the same doctrine and by the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, united by the living word. Brethren from, broad, from every part of the world participate in the same service, jointly, in the same body, and in the same spirit. Through the system of transmission, the brethren from Maranatha Christian Church, from every of the entire planet, live a moment of unity and fellowship as they live. The Hebrews live in the departure from Egypt and in the disciples with the Lord Jesus just before his death on the cross of Calvary. People from every part of the world have been reached by the eternal gospel and by the message of the soon return of the Lord Jesus. We greet every church that is following with us this Sunday school with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We're here directly from the communication central in Vila Valle Espírito Santo, Brazil, with the participation of the pastors here of the region of Vila Valle and also a few brethren from the Church of London. They are here participating with us, São Paulo Mutum, and also following with us this Sunday school. And the children, intermediary and adolescents now can go to their own classes because we're going to give continuity to our Sunday school. And we had the participation of the seminar this weekend in Domingos Martins. And the Sunday school is being followed by a couple of brethren uh, abroad in Africa. We have the participation of the brethren, as you can see here on the images, the seminar that is taking place there in Angola. And also we have this message from Pastor Bishao in Nepal, the country of Asia, uh, expressing the joy of living the doctrine and the work of this country in fellowship with us. The church is in full growth in that region. We have baptism in the United States, in the city of Wartford, in the state of Connecticut. Baptism in Framingham, Massachusetts. Vigil with the pastors in Melbourne, in the state of Massachusetts. We have events on day 11. We have a, a few testimonies and words from the brethren that participated and they were able to testify of this wonderful moment that we had yesterday in Domingos Martins. The climate that is formed here is, is very good of comprehension and helping one another. The Breton feel in, so, in some way they feel protected and they know that they will find here the answer to their questions. And no one thing, I am getting ready. I hope after this experience today to learn more. I will, I will baptize, you can be sure of that. I see that here is the best path to get to the Lord, and I believe that we all need to seek the Lord this way. 
Lord, the Lord touched my heart in order to go, return because I baptized at seven, 17 years ago here on the Manning, on the seminar, and I was uh, went astray for, uh, for a while and because of work and a few things of the world. And about three or four months ago, the Lord touched on my heart because His return is is close. My oldest son told me, without even having heard the preaching about the revelation, he, my son asked me, Daddy, the last book of Revelations, uh, of the Bible is Revelations. What is going to happen after that book is over? Will Jesus return this year still? And I answered to my son, I don't know what to... I cannot give you this answer, but I know that God is coming soon. But I need to have God in my life. So this is this was the last call that God made me. That, that's why I'm here. <laughs> We're seeing here the Lord touching the hearts and the ones who have answered this call and arrived. We can see the results there. Uh, are out there, life saved, redeemed, and now repentant, ready for the great meeting that we are going to have. And also abroad in the churches and seminars, they receive a seminar of uh, beginners that take two place yesterday. A few sent images that we can show to the brethren here in Spain, Spain, in Madrid, in Bolivia, Cochabamba, Santa Cruz de la Sierra. In Brazil, we have many locations or events that took place, like the seminar in Bahia, Pedro Rio, and many churches in San Luis and Maranhão. And, but in that location, in Napurus, the work was done with the event trumpets and feasts. And we have had many brethren watching the, the class for the beginners. Also Maranhão, Tabatão, Bahia, all in Brazil. Macapá in the state of Amapá in Brazil, Cacoal, Rondonia, Guanambi, Bahia, the Church of Igapó in Natal, Rio Grande do Norte, Church of in São Paulo, Maranhão, Rio Grande do Sul, Rio Grande, Rio Grande do Sul, Divinópolis, Minas Gerais, e Governador Valadares, Minas Gerais, in Vitória, uh, Santo Antão, uh, uh, helps the area of uh, a local area in Guarulhos, São Paulo, in Quiluz, São Paulo, in São José, Santa Catarina, São Bernardo do Campo, São Paulo, Campinas, São Paulo, Florianópolis, Santa Catarina, Suzano, São Paulo, São Vicente, São Paulo, Campina Grande da Paraíba, Manai, uh, Seminar of Guamaraguape that helps the area of Fortaleza, Ceará. We have a consecration also the Maranatha Christian Church in the barrel of Naborges the city of Naples in Bahia, another church, uh, one, another one of our churches there. And, and also the brand that graduated in the class of uh, sign language in Seattle. We also have a, a Novage class of graduation for the, for the sign language. We have also an evangelization in, in Rio de Janeiro. We also have a consecration of the temple there in that borough. We're having Larginha's uh, serenade for the, the visitors that participated in the event, trumpets and feasts. And also Jorge Saba, Saba, Santa Catarina, and the local region there to make an invitation for the Sunday school in Salvador, Bahia. We're gonna, we had an evangelistic service in the police headquarters there in Rezende, Rio de Janeiro. We had also a baptism in the city of Brevis in, the, in Marajó. For three of the brethren that came down to the waters and they have already been the fruits of the event trumpets and feasts in our And also, Fira de Santana in Bahia, we also had a baptism. And so, all those news, and we have all the news, the brethren can check it out on the Radio Manaim, all the events. A few were not mentioned here, but the brethren can check them out there. Now, giving continuity to the Sunday School work, Pastor Dede Tree is going to give an introductory word so that we can go to the questions that I made this morning. Hello, <coughs> brethren, peace of the Lord. I don't know if it was mentioned here. 
the manner in of Timothy. Money of Timothy. There was a, a a large number of people. It was around two thousand people there. It was a great seminar, a great event there. All the joy of our people it was a great happiness. Observing that this manning, this seminar was different. Uh, the seminars that took place all over Brazil, they had a different character because the topics that were brought, brought they were brought in the simplest way possible, especially for the new converts. And we had the testimony of that brother there, where there were many uh, testimonies, but these two were brought here. And and my name is Peter Sant This brother is Peruan, Peruvian. He's married to a Brazilian. He's, he was reached very recently. And we are very happy because we are observing the results of that evangelization, of that service that was made, for that proclamation that was made of the trumpets and feasts on the 24th, and also the results also with the repetition of the topic on the churches and also uh, the rebroadcast broadcast on uh, t network TV but it is sure that we are uh, taking care of uh, a project that was placed at our, uh, our disposal in which we have complete responsibility over it. We are responsible for it. One day the Lord called us for a work. He uh, appointed his objectives. And as time passed by, we began to understand with great depth, greater depth what the Lord wanted. And today, we are inside of the objective to which the Lord has called us for. And it's clear, evident that we have made failures because we are humans but we have the desire to serve the Lord by part of many and we ha we have seen a result uh, in, entire, in the entire country and also abroad uh, a, a thirst to we have seen a thirst to hear something that was we can even say have been forgotten and the Christianity the gospel has has had a, a death to the world and we as part of this um, Christian community we cannot be unaware or of this moment that is so serious which is the moment that precedes the return of the Lord Jesus I even like to mention to the brand here and maybe even surprise to some that when you have a conversation with people, the ones who have watched the meetings, they have watched the la latest meetings, how much they admire. And they, like for example, yesterday, they had at least 20 pastors from other denominations, evangelical denominations, they were there on the seminar. A few very interested in in what we always say, we are not interested on on uh, picking up churches and pastors to join us. No, we understand that everybody understands this moment and inside of their own church they promote what needs to be promoted. We don't care if a pastor would bring, take a church, leaves his own denomination coming to Maranatha. That's not our objective. We what is important is that each person take care of their own flock and bring them to green pastures and uh, calm waters. The moment is a moment of decision. What brought us to this place was had a, an important and very well directed, but now our objective is to continue so that we have the final result of this project, which is a project that will lead to eternity, that is related to the return of the Lord Jesus. 
And today, as we we had a conversation here, we have, have a couple of pastors here and workers and brethren here. We were con having a conversation about the moment in which we are living. And it is interesting that a couple of days ago, we were talking about about this moment. M moment is a word that do not define, does not define, in fact, this instant, what in physics we say, here now. So you find phenomena, physical phenomena, there are here now, there are events that, that take place like a lightning. And the word says, it's like a lightning that comes from the east and is seen on the west. That's how it's the return the Lord, the Lord will take place. And But not only this, the light, when you blink your eyes, the light goes around the earth seven times. When you, when you blink your eyes, the, at the speed of light, you can go seven times around the earth. And the Bible says, when on the twinkle of an eye is this last trumpet. So this is an important moment. And the, the world is living their own moment. And we are mentioning here that the world is ready to give all the answers in everything that may take place, in any phenomenon. They have the answer here. And we see that the answer that the Lord gives to the events that are taking place they have been amaz amazing. When you see the Fukushima in Japan, the situation was terrible there, many errors, and six months later, a year, everything is back in place, like little ants, right? You this you mess up their nest and then, you know, short while they're all back together. That's how many is. For him, the, the departure of the church, man has all the excuses to say that the facts of, of what is happening was a wind that happened, something that they don't know. And they come up with many things. Foolishness. But they have their own excuses. And the Bible says, in Prophet Joel, it says, the harvest is ready. Bring, pick up the sickle because the harvest is ready. Multitudes in the valley of decision. It is a world that is in a valley. They don't know what they need to do. And um, our word, we're, we're not the best, we're not the greatest, but our word is a word of hope. So we are saying there is a way out. The world is, is surrounded, every world, the entire world. And we have been seeing this with clarity. A dark cloud that takes control of the world, takes control of everything, takes control of institutions, families, everything, the government, and without asking for uh, uh, any apology. We are, we are not proclaiming things that people don't know. We are just pointing out what is happening. The families are being destroyed. Nobody understands that man's behavior, even in the matter of being a man or woman. People don't, even they lost they're even their idea of things that are found the foundation, but it's all inside of the project. We don't need to be desperate. And I was having a conversation with one of our brethren, and he's speaking about a difficulty that we were having. And and so my brother, my brother, the ministry of this of the vocal of the Holy Spirit needs to understand that between the ministry and the sheep, the church, there is a barrier. You cannot expose your own suffering, your own difficulties. You cannot go to the front of the flock and then expose this, your own difficulties. Why? Because the world, the flock, the people, they have no reference. And you, the person who are being placed there ahead and you have an anointing in order to suffer, you need to understand that that's what it is. It is your mission. It's to suffer. Keep this in your heart. You cannot just come to the front of the church crying and saying, oh, that's what happened to me. That's not possible. This is not ministry. The ministry is the one that is 
being used by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is not crying in order to cause anybody to be sad. The word of the Holy Spirit that is independent of our own feelings, independent of, independent of our own reason, independent of our family, independent of what people are thinking. The ministry has to be exercised. People need to feel comfortable. Everybody wants to, to feel comfortable. They want the pastor to act like uh, what they think, they, that the pastor may preach what they want, and that's not how it is. We have a commitment <coughs> with the Holy Spirit, and we will fulfill it. And today, our topic here is geared towards what is our need. Last, the previous Sunday, we began uh, a study here about a parable, which was a parable of the great har harvest. Uh, so the parable of the great harvest, oh, uh, great supper, I'm sorry. Uh, a certain man, a uh, great supper. Uh, a man was invited to the feast, inviting people to the feast, and he enforced, reinforced the invitation. The one had, that had already been invited, he says, Come, because the time has come, because that feast that I, I spoke about before, the salvation of eternal life, that feast that I said was going to happen, what I said that was going to happen, now everything is ready, it's right now. So the Lord is referring to, in this parable, about the moment in which the church is now all the instruction from the Lord, I've received the invitation, everything is ready. I just I just need to come to the feast. Now come to the feast. At this time, exactly there, this feast, we will find the excuses of the ones who don't want. They have been invited. They have been invited once again. Oh, uh, I was a convert once. Uh, oh, I was baptized by the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Lord gave me spiritual gifts. It's, if it, it's just one phase of your life, but now Jesus is at the door, and that's what we've seen. Two thousand years have passed, there is nothing else for us to wait for. But the world is out there, everybody has the right to live, and that's how it is. But now you ask. Our concern is the following. The topic that we're going to deal with is related to the world. This is, this is a warning to the world, not to the world. This warning is, is the one for us that have been traditional and now are traditional. No, that's not there. It is for the movement in the world, for religion. We have nothing to do with the bread that are out there. But I'm not we're going to use this expression because I believe that Christians, they, they can be found everywhere, but they are out there. They live in their own lives, their own teachings. But now I ask, is this parable here related to the ones who are outside or the ones who are inside? If we don't know the answer and if we don't understand this, we're, we're in death. So now we're going to begin to the first, well, to the few questions we're going to have here, uh, a meeting with more participation. We have pastors here that have, have the ability to teach here and speak all the way to the night. And we have so much to speak about here, but our satellite time is not very large. So, Pastor Alexandre here, have the word to ask, uh, ask the questions. I'll be around here, is that right? So I don't have to get up and sit down all the time. So we're going to see on the text of the parable, on the Gospel, Luke chapter 14, from 15 to 24, identify historically what are the excuses about the rejections of the project of salvation in the life of man. How many were the excuses and to whom they are directed, whether it is for the world, for the tradition, for the, for the religion, or, or if it is the work of the Holy Spirit. And mention the text to back up your answers. Three minutes, right? Leave the question there. And the brethren will see if it takes too long, we're going to answer. But the church, they will, they will find the, the answers. Amen.
e destacam quantas são. Três. É essa segunda... A irmã está dizendo que é três desculpas. Quais as três desculpas? Se é para a tradição, se é para o movimento, se é para nós aqui. Que Comprei um campo. Dia a dia, então temos experiência. Tá? Cinco juntas de boi e casei. E para quem está direcionado, mundo, tradição, movimento ou a obra? Eu para a dar que tu... In the text. The first excuse, what is the text? Show me it is directed to, to the work of the Holy Spirit. And the text is Luke 14, verse 18, the first excuse. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuse. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see. See, I ask you to have me excuse. So that was the first excuse. But, so the first excuse, I bought a, a piece of ground and I must go and and see it. I ask you to have me excuse. So now what is the prophetic importance for us? What field is this? Uh, Daniel answered, right? The invitation was for the kingdom of God. The field of uh, 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 interest of God, but the excuse of man was a man bought a field for his own personal inter selfish interest. The, the interest is everything that man wants. They wants to enjoy everything the world offers, and that, per that person is a reasonable excuse. Where Faced with the invitation from the king, this is the field of self-interest of man. So we have here. This is the first ex ex first excuse. It's a type of person, a person that then you ask. What Pastor Madeu asks, you have human reason there. A person have uh, it is human reason there. But now I ask you. Did they leave revelation and exchange it for human reason? So then he's saying the following. I bought a field. I bought. I acquired something with my own human effort. So then I'm here because I'm a person that is very important. I don't need this out there. I don't need church. I don't need eternity. I don't need Christian. I don't need pastor. I don't need the work of the Holy Spirit. I don't need pleading. I'm I don't need the word, I don't need anything. I, I have what I want, I have. What I wanted, I have already acquired. Um, there are people around, good people around me, but there's no one better than I. So that person has their own field, field of their self in, selfish interests. But the interesting that he was very polite. When he said, I plead to you, even, it even looks like he went to France to study, and I plead to you that I excuse how polite he was. But this before the Lord is no worth. A person is good, very polite person. So now let's go to the second one. Is there any anything else that the pastor want to say, Amadeu? Is that it? Oh, okay. The selfish interest of this person is always to be admiring what that person uh, ac uh, acquired themselves around their own personal possessions. So now, shit, you can remain seated and shit. <laughs> Passage of the Chi, the invitation that was made for the, the head of the household said, Come back because everything is ready. But the excuse, man pays a price for this field. The invitation of the Lord, who pays the price, is him. Who pays the price is the Jesus, the cross of Calvary. 
But in order for a man to acquire the field, he pays a price that he himself purchased it, but he will pay his, his own right. But the field that he pays for in the world is very expensive in order to uh, in order to achieve things in this world, he pays a high price. And, and the few that Jesus acquired, which is eternal life, is, uh, he has paid for it. It's, it's given up for free. It's just a, a short collaboration. It is given to us for free, but it's much more valuable than the other few because, because the one this world extinguishes, but the one in heaven will never who will live, who will go eternally. Man, man lives like if he, man, when man buys a field, he thinks that he is going to live forever, like if he is just like God, makes a mention of what the serpent t told Eve. So the deceit is exactly inside of this. He bought the field and he thinks, oh, I have an excuse, it's reasonable. It is what man does today, man. It is prophetic, right? In our midst. It is for us. So very good. So let's go to the second excuse. The first excuse was about the few. The second is? Second excuse. Yeah. And another said, verse 19, and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. So now the prophetic meaning of this second excuse here of the one who bought five oxen, yoke of oxen, so now he wants to test it. He was also very polite. So the question is the following, because what? are those five yoke of oxen and what is the prophetic meaning for this so uh, the brand of the church there yeah, let, let's let's see if we let's see if we can highlight uh, the understanding of this five uh, yoke of oxen I don't want to bother the brethren that are uh, watching and studying. You know. But when Elijah l looked for Elijah and he, has, he said that he wanted a blessing, Elijah said, look, you, if you see me going up, you will receive a blessing. And what was the objective? I want double portion of the Holy Spirit. So the power to go out of this place. So the double portion of the Holy Spirit is salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit, preparation for the for the rapture. So the blessing here and another in eternity. Double portion of the Holy Spirit. So people think that the double portion of the Holy Spirit is so that they could put a, head on, a hand on the head of people and heal them. So the power of the Holy Spirit is related to the victory that we have here and also the ones on eternity. But in order for this to happen, what happened to Elisha? Elisha, he worked on the field. So he had uh, oxen, a yoke of oxen, he had all of the, the thing made out of wood. So the plow and uh, the yoke, the yoke, they were, were all made out of wood. And what Eli Elisha did, I need double portion of the Holy Spirit, I need to get rid of the yoke of oxen and also, also of the ground and you had a, 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 a discernment when you said the ground is the world right the the earth is the world and the oxen is they are the flesh so you need double person of the holy spirit then you need to get rid of two things you don't want to leave a, a piece left behind or the smell of the barbecue, uh, the fire is to burn it. So only the so only the Holy Spirit that saves man. So double person of the Holy Spirit. Just having an understand of what this life is, which is not an eternal life. If you don't have this, you don't have double person of the Holy Spirit at all. You just have the biblical text. You can even use it, but see my brethren. When he killed the 
ox and it set on fire. So then that was Elisha. They made a, a, a hammer float, float in the water and he produced, multiplied the oil on the vessel and also the resurrection of that child. And see, that was the detail of that time. The double of miracles, twice as many miracles, right? So then you see here the, the excuse. You have to understand that the excuse here is not for the world. We're not other brethren from other church, no. It was the ones who are being invited. We are being invited. And now it was said, come because everything is ready. Oh, but I I cannot go because I have five yoke of oxen. So now answer my brethren. One yoke of oxen that keeps men to the ground. Just mention it. We can say one. Power. Political power. Political power. Oh, I'm going to be a candidate because getting uh, become a politician is seen. No, that's not it. Political power is what want to control things in a political way. You have a, a church and you begin to gather people in order to dominate that people. You being the owner of a project that is not yours because it is the Holy Spirit. And you begin to work as a politician there. Oh, I need to become a pastor, so now I need to make a church for myself. So this is political power. He let go of the Holy, the dominate, the control of the Holy Spirit in order to control himself. So inside of the church, he's inside the gospel, and he's the work of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want to know anything related to the Holy Spirit. He doesn't care of what is going to happen. It is he's only interested on his self, self political interests. So he comes up with something. He went. He came up with something in the region. He wants to put everybody in the same situation where he is. He wants the presbytery to say that he is right, and the presbytery will never say that. You understand? So because you have, if you want to take our own destination, if you want to do whatever you want, that's all right. No problem with that. Everybody has freedom to do whatever they want. But in the work of the Holy Spirit, we don't discuss topics that have already been decided. And so, political power is, does not work for us. But now, another power, social power. Now, social power, with the cooperation of the bread, and this part here, we have political, we have social, economical, cultural, religious. So what is this social? Power, social power, where is it for us? How can we argue? How can we argue on this field, which is a social field, which is very encompassing, in detriment to the kingdom of God? Oh, I cannot do this because I'm very busy. I'm instead of preaching, um, I'm going to. Uh, promote a barbecue here and Sunday school we have, instead of ha having a Sunday school we are going to give food to the poor of course you can give food to the poor whenever you want out of your own pocket but we cannot we cannot uh, take money from the church that has, does have money and give food to the poor then not even the government can do of course you can help and so work the Holy Spirit and then they have to ask in every place when there's a problem with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we are helping. But we cannot confuse what you do socially with the work of the Holy Spirit, or you replace thinking that socially you go, oh, oh but I'm giving food to the poor, now I'm going to heaven. No. I, asked, I want to be excused because I'm a very uh, social person. I do everything to help the poor. Of course, that's what you need to do, but that does not excuse you for the kingdom of God. First, the kingdom of God and everything else uh, goes after. If you have a work to do, do it, but that cannot enter into the, this field here in order to replace eternal life. Here is one thing. 
So uh, here goes another yoke of oxen. So, so they, they also the message they deviate from eternity and go and they give this message to the world. So very good. <coughs> it's also a deviation of the message because the message has a purpose that leads to eternity. When you enter here, and the message for this life, so then you get is the yoke of oxen sinking the plow to the ground even more. It is something very interesting when you mentioned Elijah and Elisha. And we have the the yoke and the oxen. No, people said, I'm not in the flesh. I'm not in sin. But they are in their human reason. So they have the yoke. They, so they didn't burn the, the yoke. They need to deny themselves. So human reason. Oh, but I'm not in the flesh. I'm the spirit. I'm not in sin. You are judging me. I'm not in sin. I'm very well married. I don't do this, I don't do that. But human reason, you have not burned the wood. So that's what you mentioned there. So reason, I'm not in sin, but you are because reason, human reason, it goes against the revelation. So you're accused there, in that case there. Reason, human reason, Amos, in order to become a prophet, he left the yoke because he wanted to be a prophet. Well, we, have, we don't have much time left. The more uh, human reason takes control, more man is, is forced to look to the ground because it's a yoke. So we need to stop here. We're not going to, we're not going to go beyond the time. Well, have 40 minutes of service and 40 minutes of transmission is 11.02. We can go until 11.15. So we have here the economical. Let us economize time. Let's summarize the time. So we have economical power. Another yoke of oxen so that Braden can, uh, can cooperate. Um, collaborate here. I remember we, when we were beginning, it was a small group and uh, some man came here, he looked for us, he came from another state and he said, I'm very upset with my church and uh, I'm the one who built the temple, I built the benches and the organ and there is a people that is with me and I'm coming here because I want to come to Maratha Church. Then we placed it on the on the presence of the Lord, and the Lord said, "Oh, I don't want this." Oh, but then we said, "Whoa, it's a bunch of people," and the Lord said, "Oh, I don't want this." <laughs> so economical power is something that is not important. Whoever thinks that you're going to buy the kingdom of God with money, it doesn't work because rich normally. They can never pay for their uh, uh, tithing because they don't know how much they earn. So they, they have all this difficulty. So the money always comes from the poor. So if you're on the street, it's very difficult for you to open up uh, a window on your car to give money to the poor. Because you are in the car, it's because you don't have money. Because they spent all the money on the car. So now you see the poor, they always have a little money. Uh, and they have a little change to give to someone else a chicken wing to give to the poor <laughs> so the rich they, they don't even go on the streets anymore they take a ride on helicopter when I, got, when I criticize in the rich people that have resource they live like if they were poor they are servants of the Lord we know many who are very good Christians but well, we also have the religious power. Let's bring it to a close. Religion is of religious and cultural, the philosophy, the theology, the philosophy. They don't want the work of the Holy Spirit, and so then they come up with foolishness. They don't want to preach about the kingdom of God, the life of Jesus, the moment in which we are, the revealed word. They want to preach foolishness. They, they memorize something, a, a phrase of. Um, 
is a brother that came up with uh, very beautiful words and we come up with so many beautiful words but that's not what we need in order to preach we're not we don't care about this human culture that has no worth and people think that oh the Assyria uh, the Babylonian Empire now we can answer and it is impossible today to be preaching about uh, beautiful using beautiful word beautiful words but without revelation it's foolishness human culture it is, it is truly worth it and culture is not something that you it is something that you just learn with the book so religious we're going to leave it for next week this is very dangerous the most dangerous here so let us bring the message to a close we're going to have a, a short word here my brethren, we have the sadness to, to say we, with a heavy heart, we, we need to uh, the passing of Pastor Saraiva who was 59 years old, he died very young and his wife Sueli and the children Aline, Rafael, Livia, João Virtu and they're also their parents Severino and Jodete and a few grandchildren, though, even though he was so young. A group of uh, grandchildren there, Maria Eduarda, Henrique, Arthur, and Ana Beatriz. We sent, we sent a representative to this area. And now we are registering here with sadness. This um, sad um, event. And want to uh, wish the family, uh, the pastors, we want to wish that the Lord give you the comfort. We understand that we live in a world in which always is always ready to, to bring us challenges. And this is a, a most difficult time for our lives. And here it is when we see uh, one of our close ones to pass. When we, when we know that this life, would, this person will never be seen on earth here anymore, this all being a discomfort, but it also strengthens us. And I know that the family has been comforted by the Lord. It was a great suffering also for us here. We suffered because it was something, was uh, an aggression in the moment in which we're living. I don't want to mention here. But I want to say that the Presbyterian and the Maratha Christian Church is very solidary with the family at, at their disposal as we have always been. And everything that is at our disposal, we will be helping the brethren. And also our brother from São Luis Maranhão was an on hire that was uh, inaugurating a, a new church in Sailandia. But it, it is interesting that I went there when I saw his name, received, we receive every day, we receive a report from the work that is being done at this time. His name was there as the work that he had done on the 24th as well as on the 5th and I glorify the Lord. Lord, I glorify you for this life that has been taken away and it is now before the throne and he was presented before the Lord with his weakness as us, as we are, what he could do and left a landmark for the church in that state. Not only that, but uh, uh, the entire country. I also want to uh, mention about uh, Pastor Nathan Moreira de Jesus who was already ill. He was, was from Santa Maria of Suasui, Guanhães, Valadares, because I received information from Belo Horizonte. Oh, he died on Belo Horizonte. He was already uh, not doing very well on his health, but I would like to send our greeting to the family, the families generally speaking to all the peace of the Lord.
the brand wants to make any uh, additional remark regarding the, the invitation, the rejection. It was only uh, they stopped on the second, even though they didn't speak about the third one. Everything is linked to the syndrome. The first excuse. They tried in this first excuse. I got married. So people look out there. No, this is going to bring a harm. I just want to see, and then, then I saw. Now I'm going to try. And then after they try, they get married with the world out there. That's the syndrome of the fall. <coughs> because the fall, it will be assured. You see that you experience, and then you make a covenant and unite, gets united with this. It is interesting now, so the individual here, before he sees, he, he purchases, and so we're gonna buy a house, a, a land. First you go there and look, right? See the situation, if it is worth it to invest on this business. But when you buy without seeing, we would, we use an expression of business saying, that he bought it uh, in the darkness, right? Because you bought without seeing, you make you made an acquisition of a, a good, of a pro property without knowing what is there, and you end up paying for it, right? Because you bought in the darkness. When the individual doesn't have the light, doesn't have the revelation, the darkness, then he lives what is the Lord's, what which is free, which is eating the bread in the kingdom of God, and he exchanges it for a property here of this life he makes this inversion of values and makes this change the Lord is giving for free he gives his salvation but but he rather pay for a perdition the person wants he gives a way for even which is free but he rather pay for his own perdition he is going to pay high because he's going to pay with his own life so now the children's song. God created heaven and earth.
Amém. A igreja se colocar de pé, as crianças, adolescentes, intermediários. Intermediários, adolescentes. The evangelist is going to pray for the bread. Lord, we plead for the power of the blood of Jesus. We place before you these children, the teachers, Lord. Take them by your hands. Help them on this walk. Deliver them from any evil. That they may grow in your grace and the teaching of your word. Give them means for teachers to transmit your teachings. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for your adoration. Prepare us for the service later tonight. We pray to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Love of God and good and eternal Father. Suit and turn a consolation Holy Spirit with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. The brethren may be seated. And to all, the peace of the Lord. <coughs>